Where, and again, he says in 13, verse 13, you're taking on the whole armor of God so you may be able to withstand in that evil day of having done all to stand. Then he goes through and lifts the armor of God, girded with truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet charged with the preparation of the gospel of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the Spirit. We could spend an hour on each one of these, but I'm going to challenge you to find out what they are. You need to know what they are in order to put them on. And it's not that simple. What do you mean by uh, girded with truth? Pilate said, what is truth? Jesus gave him an answer. It's not that simple, too. We've got to get into it. Breastplate of righteousness. What does that mean? Not your righteousness, his. How do you put it on? Are there holes in it? Your feet shod with preparation. Hey, you got to prepare. You don't go into unskilled. You go. Part of the game is to be trained and be prepared. The shield of faith. Are there holes in your shield? The Roman soldiers repair those between battles, not during the battle. Is there a, is there a weakness in your faith? Is there something that bothers you? You read on it. Get it out of the table. Get an answer. Plug that hole now, not later. The helmet of salvation. What does that mean? Owning it's not enough. You got to wear it. You're not wearing it. You can tell the people who aren't wearing it because they have, we can tell by the bandages. Sword of the Spirit. Well, that's the scripture. Yes, but you need to understand about swords. swords longer swords give you a better reach. At the Naval Academy, I always had a long reach. That was always good for me because I hate boxing. But we had always boxing, wrestling, and hand to hand every year. But that kept, gave me, kept it knit. It allowed me to at least survive. Sword, same thing. Long sword's better. Romans developed a 24 inch machaira. And with it, they conquered the world. How they do that? There's two things you need to know about Machairas. You have to take special training and lots of practice. And the same thing's true with this sword. Just having ain't enough. You've got to be trained, and you've got to uh, practice, practice, practice. We can talk more about that. But the big one is the last one, the seventh one, the heavy artillery, prayer. And boy, that's what you and I need to indulge in every day, heavy duty, for the sake of this country, for the sake of our way of life. If you care about your children and grandchildren, you should be praying for George Bush and his staff for wisdom, insight, discernment. Because getting Osama bin Laden ain't going to do it. We're going to get something far deeper. And uh, we've got to deal with that. In fact, well, we need to make our watchword of Second Chronicles 7.14. That should be our national verse. God says, to gave Solomon a special commitment. He announced a principle. Yes, it applied to Israel specifically, but I believe our God changes not that he announced the principle. If my people who are called by my name, if they'll do four things, I'll do three things. If they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 The one thing that Islam has going for it is the sin of America. They can point to it. It is manifest to the entire world. We, we, the the, the uh, profligacy, the, uh, the, the moral uh, exports of this country are a, a shame to even just average people, let alone uh, people who are called by God's name. God says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, we know how to do that. They know how to pray, we know how to do that, and seek my face. That's a little different kind of thing. That's not an intellectual thing. That's a commitment kind of thing. But here's the one that's the rub. And turn from their wicked ways. And this is not the wicked ways of the nation that's in view here. It's the wicked ways in the body of Christ. It's not the sins of the unbelievers in America that's the problem. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and guess what? And heal their land. And boy, should we applaud the rise of concern in the hearts of America since September 11th. Let's hope it's not a week or two flash in the pan. Let's hope it endures to be something more real, something more serious, something more lasting. But what comes of that is dependent on you and me. Don't depend on the silent pulpits in America that spoon feed the usual palaver. It's your job and mine. What's your action plan? Guard your reactions. Be a witness. Don't fall in the trap of a backlash against peace-loving Muslims. That's not the issue. We're not here. God loves those Muslims. He died for them. Repair our illiteracy, ourselves, yours and mine. Our, our, most Christians don't know their Bible. It's time to find out what it really says about everything. And find out what Islam is really all about. Don't fall for the propaganda that's uh, tailored for political correctness. 
But we do need to realign our personal priorities. Every one of those should have changed on September 11th of the year 2001. And our most precious resource is time. You need to re-examine carefully, deliberately, how you spend your time and where God's program fits into that. And don't forget your heavy artillery prayer. It's time to get serious about our faith. I'm going to close with just a challenge. I've gotten this before, but I want to put it right in front of you. It's a challenge that I want you to, it's a proposition I want you to challenge. Test yourself. I'm going to suggest that you and I are being plunged into a period of time about which the Bible says more than any other period of time in history, including the time that Jesus walked the shores of Galilee and climbed the mountains of Judea. Now that's preposterous. The Bible says more about the area that we're going into than it does about any other period of time in history, including the Gospel period. That's my assertion. Now, I don't want you to accept it. I don't want you just to echo the prejudices of your teachers, whatever they might be. Find out for yourself. What does the Bible really say about these things? And secondly, what's really going on? Now, we monitor strategic trends on our website and, and all our publications. Uh, uh, what is the mass destruction of Matthew 24, struggle for Jerusalem and Zechariah and Luke, Magog? 